Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and I've been asked by some of our viewers to explain some of the technologies that are used and one in particular is how does a UPS work? Obviously, a UPS stands for Uninterruptible Power Supply. What it does is when the power goes off, it provides 110 power for your computer, your telephone systems, or any uh, equipment that's plugged into the back of it. It could be a light. You know, a little lamp plugged into the back. I don't know. Whatever you use UPSs for, we use them for computers and we use them for telephone systems. But it's a nice little system. It's different than battery backup. And I'll explain to you why. And I'll ex tell you how we test them, okay? But pay attention to me. And what happens here is 110 AC current goes into the UPS. The UPS then converts it to 24 volts DC. So it converts not only from AC, alternating current, to DC, direct current, but it also changes the voltage from 110 AC to 24 volts DC. Now once it converts that, that 24 volts comes out and it goes into, most of the time there's two sets of 12 volt batteries, 12 volts each, uh, DC, 12 volts DC. Usually when you have batteries, in fact every time I know of, the principle is probably, um, when it comes to batteries it's always uh, DC, direct current. Alternating current, let me explain a little bit about alternating current and the difference between the two. Direct current is consistent. It always has a positive and a negative, and it never changes. Now, alternating current is different. It has one moment it's going in one direction, the other moment it's moving in the other direction. And the reason why you have AC in your house and in buildings and things like that is if you use DC to power your house, DC does not travel very far over cables. And I mean very far, I mean miles. And we're not talking about you know, two or three hundred feet or, you know, even a thousand foot, it will travel a thousand foot. But usually it, it gets very difficult to push direct current over long distances. However, AC current can be easily sent over uh, long distances. Well, not easily, but it can be sent over long distances. And therefore, it's, or I should say, it's more practical. There you go, that's the word. It's more practical to send over long distances than DC. So that's how we ended up with AC current in our house. You know, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with what it looks like usually, and I know some of you are bored at this point of why I'm getting so detailed on this, but some people may not know exactly what I'm talking about. But you have, you know, your, your two straight lines in the center of which is ground. Um, and only one of them is actually hot. Uh, and so that's your, your AC turns into DC, and DC has a plus and a minus, and that's it. It never changes polarity. It never uh, does anything except constantly sending out current. And that's why it's called direct current. And uh, a lot of things are DC. Your car is DC, and most cars are 12 volts. Um, uh, flashlights are DC. Batteries you put in the flashlight are DC. Uh, uh, radios, most radios are, are DC, especially the, the portable ones. Uh, your cell phone it runs off a of DC current. Uh, so most small devices uh, that don't require pushing power for long distances usually end up DC. Not always, you know, you got clocks you plug into the wall or AC. That's just more convenient and all. Washing machines, AC, things like that, refrigerators. Anyway, it creates a DC current that keeps two 12 volt batteries uh, fully charged at 12 volts. And then what happens over here is you have another device, the same as here, that translates 24 volts DC back to 110 volts AC. And um, uh, it's called a, uh, a rectifier. And then it goes back into, of course, AC. And there's little plugs back here. 
that come out the back. And uh, so that's how your UPS is attached. Now what happens is, is if you lose this 110 current over here, the batteries kick in. And uh, this little uh, uh, system right here converts it from 24 volts back to 110 volts. Now there's a lot of power that's consumed from here to here. And these batteries have to change it, uh, do a lot of work to get it up to 110. So most UPSs don't last very long. And remember, the main purpose of the UPS, originally how it was designed, was to give you enough time to go on your computer and nicely shut it down. So when you put UPSs on servers and you lose power in the building, you should be going to your server and, and um, nicely closing all the files and, and, and going through your normal shutdown process rather than that sharp turn off of power and then when it comes back on if you you could have corrupted files so you really need a UPS on any of your computer systems and any of your telephone systems and uh, what this will produce is usually uh, you're gonna need at least uh, 15 20 minutes to shut down your computer um, one of the ways we test our UPS's is that we take an old CRT we put the UPS in like a room like we have here and we turn on the CRT and then we unplug the UPS and we keep track of how long it takes before that UPS um, drops. So that's one way to do it and that's the way we do it so we know how long that UPS will support a CRT and uh, that's going to give us some ideas uh, about how long it will support a server. It's usually going to be about the same, might be less, might be more. But it's not meant to run a system. It's just meant to give you enough time to shut the system down. And that's how we test it. So it look like. The other thing you should be aware of is these batteries do wear out. So we recommend that you change batteries every two years. You might get as long as four years, but uh, two years is about the limit. I remember a couple years ago, um, we got a call from one of our customers uh, about uh, 25, 30 miles from here, and they were ticked. And uh, they said, you know, you put in this phone system and you gave us uh, UPS, and uh, we had an accident out front of our building and knocked down the telephone pole, and now we don't have power, nothing happened, it just died instantly, our phone system. And you promised that our phone system would be up, you know, for uh, the length of time that we promised, whatever that was. And so we looked in a database as quickly as possible, and we said, Hmm, I haven't talked to you in like 11 years. Are you sure this is our system? And the lady said, yes, your, your tag is on that system. And I said, so the system is 11 years old? And she said, yes. I said, do you also remember that when we gave you the contract to put in that, that phone system, that computer network, that we said you had to change the batteries every two years? It is not forever. So if you're going to buy UPSs on eBay, or uh, used UPSs on eBay or from your friends or whatever else. Just remember, if they're more than two years old, there's no reliability there that you're actually going to have a phone system, I mean a UPS, work for your phone system or your computer network. So it's a nice system. It's not meant to run phone systems or computer networks forever until the power comes up. It's not a generator. It's just a uh, a power backup system that allow you the management features of shutting down the equipment before it gets turned off completely for lack of power. And you know what else it does? It does a little bit of filtering too. And mostly UPSs have that filtering capability, has uh, you know things you could do. Now it's not a power conditioner. Power conditioner would take 80 volts to 130 volts and turn it into pure 110 voltage with a pure uh, AC sine wave and everything else. UPS does not do that. At least most UPSs don't do that. There are actual um, uh, power filters uh, that actually do that and there's a little, you know, they hum and they make a lot of noise, they generate a little bit of heat and stuff like that. And they're great. Um, when you need them, when you're in areas where you're not getting clean power and you, you want to make sure that the power supplies to your phone system or IT equipment is not damaged by the fluctuation in voltage. It would always keep the same voltage, um, but it does uh, a filter to make sure it's a clean one. Um, so anyway, make a long story short, that's the purpose. Uh, if you don't have reliable power, 
because of thunderstorm, I mean lightning storms and things like that, that's always good to have that um, uh, power there. It's always good to have UPS there. Again, this is uh, Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. And please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, things like that. And also like us on um, uh, YouTube. We really appreciate you watching our videos and watch some more videos. We have more coming. Give us suggestions, what you'd like us to talk about and what questions you'd like us to answer. You have a great day. Thank you. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this YouTube installment of CableSupply.com.